Hey guys, what's up? Will here. I'm, uh, you know, I just got back a couple days ago from Hawaii and I had some conversations with people that really opened up my eyes to some things. Now, I've often found it very suspicious the correlation between Nazi Germany and common day America. There's a theory that America is basically the new revival of the Nazi party. This is this is echoed in the strange similarities between the United States Patriot Act, which was brought about after the quote unquote war of terror after 9/11, which I believe was our own fabrication, our own falsity. So there's a correlation between the Patriot Act after 9-11 and the Nazi Engagement Act, or it's something like that. Hitler did this act that's almost... You know, the, the tenets and the, the backgrounds and the fundamentals of these two acts are very, very similar. Well, if you combine that with how interesting it is that after World War II, the United States brought over all of these Nazi scientists. Huh. Very coincidental. We brought over all these Nazi scientists in Operation Paperclip. Well, so I was mentioning to somebody about Werner von Braun and how we brought him over uh, Operation Paperclip and he's this Nazi. And uh, yeah, that's what I would like to talk about today. I'd like to talk about um, changes in history and changes in people's perception. Well, this gentleman that I was speaking with, he was very well-versed, very educated, uh, seemed to have a grasp of things. But he told me, he said, well, I don't think that's true. Because he says, Warner Von Braun, he worked on the Manhattan Project, you know, for the uh, nuclear bomb for us to stop the Nazis. And he was a Jew. Well, I just, I didn't want to tell him that I thought he was an idiot. Or, you know, any such judgment. Uh, or that he was wrong. I, you know, I just told him. I said, wow, that's uh, really interesting because I hadn't heard that before. <laughs> After I left with him that day, I uh, pulled up my phone and I looked at Warner Von Braun. Well, Warner Von Braun was an SS officer, an SS major. So that means not only was he a Nazi... He was the worst of Nazis. Okay. So let's look at Werner von Braun here. Werner Magnus Maximilian Friar von Braun. Um, he was a member of the SS. Now, here he tells a story about how he says that he was urged to join and that they said it would be nothing and he would he would get the rank of lieutenant just by doing nothing. And he even, and you know, this is his own fabrication. We have no basis behind this. But of course I'm sure this story was being told to those who were skeptical of having a Nazi major being a director of part of the NASA. Yeah, awfully convenient. Well, he also says that, you know, hey, in this one picture with me standing here behind Himmler, that was the only time I ever put on the SS uniform. Well, a former officer told the BBC that Von Braun had regularly worn the SS uniform to official meetings. Okay, so obviously Von Braun and this other guy have different stories. Who should we believe? 
Now, Von Braun's a very public figurehead. It would look very bad for NASA, which is strangely almost the same spelling or phonetics as Nazi. It would look very strange to have a very, very SS officer as a public figurehead. So there is an... I could understand an agenda or a bias to deny these claims. I mean, he even got promoted to the major. He began as second lieutenant and got promoted three times for his work as major. If we were to believe that he didn't do anything, I mean, yes, it's possible that he got these promotions, sort of like we give these um, doctorates to people like Bill Cosby, right? These honorary doctorates. Is it possible he got an honorary three promotions in the SS? Well, I personally don't think so. That's just from the history of the SS that I know and knowing that these SS are the worst, highest touted Nazis around and the one people you don't want to mess with. Because there's no end to their evil. They are the SS. The almost secret service of Hitler. So would... Werner von Braun lie about this? Yes, he would lie about this, okay? So, I don't know if we should really take him at his full, full word. So, not only was von Braun's own accounts a little muddied, but here was this gentleman proposing that he was a Jew. And that he worked with us to help stop the Nazis. Um, sorry to say this, guys, but they would not have put a Jew in the SS and given him three promotions. No matter what he has done for the Nazi party. That's just nonsensical. I mean, there are some that propose that Hitler was a Jew, but not in the SS. And Hitler supposedly was an Acacia Jew. Uh, that's even widely debated. Werner von Braun, just look at the name. Wer Werner Magnus Maximilian Freiherr von Braun. Does that sound German or does that sound Jewish? I didn't see Geldfelds or anything like that, any typical Jewish patriarchal naming convention in his name. To me, it looks just like German. So there's an obvious disconnect here with a little bit of his history. What I think's interesting is some of the documentaries about him. Like this one where he describes, he's actually uh, speaking in it from this Walt Disney television production um, about space. To me, this just, this just, please check it out for yourself because to me, this screams of propaganda. And look at the person who's putting it out. And look at the company who's putting it out. Walt Disney. Have you ever seen the Walt Disney logo? It's got 666 in it multiple times, guys. Okay. So, you know, Warner Von Braun... Let's let's listen to what this guy has to say and tell me if you think this is logical or not. Of course, you know, they'd been working on a shoestring uh, and now all of a sudden all of this money and, and big facilities are, are available to them 
you know, World War II is still some time away, and and von Braun, you know, to his dying day, you know, always always stressed that what he was after was rockets for the purposes of going to the moon and exploring space. Um, just so happened, you know, Nazi Germany intervened and Adolf Hitler was there and World War II happened and the work of von Braun and, the, and these other rocket uh, experts uh, became part of the Nazi war machine. It was right after that opening of Peenemunde towards the later and third. So guys, they are they're trying to propose Werner von Braun as this, having this noble agenda. And all he wanted to do was go to the moon and make rockets. <laughs> Quite a noble agenda for somebody who took a position in the SS, raised in, right, rose in ranks through the SS. Because in my limited knowledge of the SS, it was always told to me, it was always described that the only way for the SS officers were to rise up, were to be uncommonly cruel, vindictive, mean, and just the worst of the worst. So, what I looked at was, hey, look, here's all these German rocket scientists that came from Germany but spent the most time working at NASA, right? Uh, Werner von Braun, he was a director here. Look over here. Oh, director of flight dynamics. That's another large position. Um, and Hans Ho Hostenstein, the director of flight dynamics just didn't really have any information about him uh i was looking him up and you know i found this list of rocket pioneers uh to people who the the names and the locations of the people that they went one thing i found very interesting is von braun here was listed twice Huh. Okay, that's weird. If Werner von Braun's name was Magnus, how likely is it that there was another Werner von Braun Magnus and he moved to the private sector? I don't think so. I mean, there is a great possibility that this is incorrect. But look, they're even on different groups. Group 1 would have been the first people brought over. Now, it would make sense that Werner von Braun is so important. Let's bring him over here. But why would they then have the same Werner von Braun listed on Group 6? Had they brought him over... This is... I'm making assumptions here and proposing hypotheses. I'm not saying this is what happened. Is it possible they brought him over under a different name and moved him to the private sector? They brought him over in the first group and then later on said, Oh yeah, in the sixth group, we're bringing Dr. Werner von Braun. Just thinking that you're an idiot? That you will never find out? So here's this on the Wikimedia Commons, right? You can get uh, Project Paperclip team at Fort Bliss. Um... I had the joy of being at Fort Bliss for a little bit of period of time and, uh, you know, for some <laughs> little bit of useless trivia, did you know the drinking age at Fort Bliss is 18? And why is that? Well, that was made by the army officials on base because Fort Bliss was so close to Mexico that the 18 year olds the under 20 year olds from 18 to 20 they would just cross the border and go drinking well that was very dangerous for servicemen so they went ahead and said okay you're 18 you can drink on base now this is the project 
paperclip team and it, it, it points out all these people and you can look at this but what I thought was interesting was I looked through some of these and they're not SS officers uh, Werner von Braun is of course but a lot of these other ones were not SS officers so what was so special about Werner von Braun that put him in the SS? Now, I do know that the SS did a lot of programs and projects against the people. These were propaganda and sort of mind control or subversion projects against the German people. Um... Is it possible that that's why he attained such a high rank in the SS and that he didn't want to talk about these sort of programs? And that our government brought him over and that's why he was the top of NASA for this propaganda and subversion tactics? Quite possible. I mean, with the Flat Earth movement today and looking at fake NASA and the fake Apollo missions, there definitely is some propaganda. So, guys, I just think it's very, very interesting. Um, just, you know. What is the cause for this? Why are there so many questions with Werner von Braun and why were none of them asked or none of them explained by NASA? I mean, here is, a, here is an organization that we've thrown trillions of dollars at. I don't know if that's an exaggeration or not on my part. I really don't know how much money we've spent to NASA since the 60s. But, with what I have seen, especially from the DSC OVR satellite images and the moon transit seen by DSC OVR, it seems that these NASA images are fake. I've gone through a lot of the images and evaluated them myself, and I believe that I have seen great evidence, even in the NASA's own archives, of fake and bogus pictures of the Apollo moon landings and subsequent subsequent space shots. Um, I don't know if this extends to the International Space Station or how far this really goes. All I know is I have many, many more questions than when I started. So what's the reason for Werner von Braun? What's the reason for this kind of disturbance in his history, the sort of inconclusive background that we were given. I mean, what good reason were we given for having a Nazi as our director? Yeah, he liked rockets. Okay. Well, what's the reason that he became a major in the SS? What rocket program was he working on? There's a lot of proposals that the Nazis had anti-gravity technology. Levitation technology and that they were working for these UFOs, quote unquote. Is that a possibility? Is it possible that the United States brought over this technology and have had it ever since World War II? I'd say it's possible. I was looking, reading the uh, reports of a military expedition that went down to Antarctica. Um, Antarctica is a place that the Nazis reveled in the fact that they created an impenetrable base deep in the ice and the subterranean cave and whether they created that or not there was a definitive trail 
uh, I don't know if it was called the Antarctic Trail, but let's just call it the Antarctic Trail. And dozens of Nazi submarines traveled that trail down and back. It is even theorized that Hitler escaped along this path. Now, back to that military encounter. This military expedition went down to Antarctica and they encountered what they said were ships that came up out of the water, flew in the air, blew up their ships easily, and then descended right back into the water. Uh, the expedition turned around immediately, uh, encountering this force that they were not equipped to deal with. They could not fight. To me, this sounds like UFO technology. And when I'm saying UFO, I'm keeping in mind that there's a great possibility that this is technology that has been created, maintained, and developed by man. Is it possible that UFOs is another propaganda machine? Subversion of the psyche of the people? A distraction? That the Nazis in World War II had the technology for? Well, there are definite uh, what seemed to look like launch pads that had super high energy, uh, super high electrical grids associated with it. And we don't really know what they're for. Uh, they have a lot of technology that we just didn't know. And did, you know, did the scientists that came over from Operation Paperclip have any nefarious training or were they used for any nefarious subvertive means by our government? Why did we bring over such a large amount? A lot of these were war criminals that were supposed to stand trial at Nuremberg and they escaped. Well, we don't let war criminals off easily so they must have had a very, very good reason. This is all part of the, this, everything together kind of describes why and some reasons that I really question NASA, Warner Von Braun, Operation Paperclip, and the such. Now for a little Operation Paperclip uh, addendum here, or a little, let's go to another little chapter. Lyme disease. I saw this on a uh, Jesse Ventura conspiracy theory uh, episode. Lyme disease did not exist years ago. Okay. It wasn't until after World War II that Lyme disease started. Now, there was a scientist that we brought over from Operation Paperclip that we gave a laboratory and research station to. And his main point of study was how to distribute um, disease or famine through these ticks. Well, very oddly, this gentleman, he had his research station directly across the lake or pond or whatever it is from Lyme. New Jersey, the exact place of origin of Lyme disease. So here we have this scientist who, this is what he studied, this is, this is what his passion was, and we brought him over, and oh look, right where this guy was, we have this outbreak, and oh, it's this disease we've never seen before. Maybe we had never seen it because it was created by him. Huh. Huh. Quite interesting. I can't say conclusively it was him, but that seems right along the path that some of these could have gotten out accidentally, or maybe they could have been led out into the populace as a test or as a terror, something to get people afraid of. 
So in my mind, no, Operation Paperclip was not in innocent. <laughs> These were a group of scientists that were out to do evil things. Look at this. Chemical Biological Warfare. Oh yeah, but he was an SS member and he only got into the uniform once and he's just a really good guy. Don't worry about him being an SS Nazi because he's our director for NASA. Guys, if you want to believe that, go ahead. I find that a tough pill to swallow. Question everything. You can love your neighbors, but you can hate your enemies. And I've been finding lots and lots of enemies. Namingly, the evil oligarchy that's behind the power structure of our... I'm not going to say of our country, because there's a lot of good people. But the evil people that are behind the evil things that our country does. Subverting the nations, taking over other nations, uh, natural resources, waging wars and terror over our country and other countries. But no, he's just an SS Nazi. We don't have anything to worry about. Walt Disney vouched for him. Till the next video, guys. Love you. Take care.